The year was 1980. The demise of the Carter administration moved disgruntled Democrats to seek the leadership, trust, and charisma of Ted Kennedy as the next United States president. While family, friends, and supporters looked on, Ted announced his bid for the presidency. It had all the markings of Kennedy campaigns of the past. It had hope, vision, and enthusiasm. Despite Kennedy's failure to gain the nomination, his leadership and passion for liberal causes prevailed. Kennedy's compassion would lead him to places as far afield as Ethiopia to inspect the wretched conditions that doomed thousands to death by hunger. In South Africa, he would argue against the system of apartheid, calling attention to what injustice it offers in exchange of human rights. Closer to home, Senator Kennedy is now concerned with issues that range from lessening the effect of Reagan tax cuts challenging the poor to the president's Central American policy. And it is a delight to welcome Senator Kennedy here for an informal chat this morning, just I'm to catch up and find out how you're doing. Very, very well. I'm delighted to be back in your program. It's lovely to have you here. Hands across Massachusetts. You were involved this weekend, um, and you yeah. had a lot of things to say about the hungry. The White House says that uh, the poor don't know about the programs, and yet you say there just aren't enough. Is that true? Well, uh, <clears throat> the point I was making is that the uh, fact that th those that are really ignorant about uh, hunger, not only in Massachusetts, but across the country, uh, uh, are those, uh, I think, probably within the administration who fail to recognize the, the depth of the problem that we're facing, not only on hunger, but also on, on homelessness. And uh, we have an opportunity to do something about it. I was inspired by the people in Massachusetts at the Boston Common, and I think all Americans were inspired uh, the, by the fact that close to 7 million Americans were sufficiently caring about the 20 million that are hungry to really so take some time and and to uh, indicate that they do care. It really shows that uh, this con country has a conscience, and I think that that's uh, very encouraging. And the real question now is uh, what we're going to do about it. This was inspirational on Sunday, but um, the point now is uh, where do we go from uh, here? And I think we have some important opportunities to try and relieve the problem. If we increase the programs, do we also increase the opportunity for misuse? And, and those that are, that are not aware of the depth of hunger, isn't that what they fall back on? Misuse. Uh, well, the, uh, the studies that have been done by the General Accounting Office, uh, which is really a, an arm of the Congress, but is basically uh, nonpartisan, uh, shows that there's uh, about an 8% uh, mistaken level. But about half of those uh, mistakes are people that are worthy of the programs that are not receiving it. That's considered a failure, and about half of that are those that are getting too much. So it's in terms of, uh, it doesn't even compare, for example, mm. to defense contracting. Oh. And uh, the, the question is, in what we are t basically uh, trying to do, legislation that I've introduced with Congressman Panetta, uh, it will cost a billion dollars a year, but it will, over a five-year uh, period, uh, effectively uh, reduce the problem of hunger uh, in America. You know, hunger is something that we know how to deal with. We, there are many problems that we're facing in the country that we have different ways of trying to approach. But hunger, we, we know how to feed people, we know how to grow. And a billion dollars out of an $850 billion budget seems to me to be something we can't afford not to do. It's interesting, Senator. You didn't grow up hungry. I didn't grow up hungry. I think until you put yourself in a position where you really see the, the gnawings of hunger, you, you don't understand it. With your own children, you've opened their eyes you know, with taking Patrick to Appalachia, with taking Teddy to Ethiopia. Do you do that because they didn't grow up knowing hunger just as you didn't? I mean, putting them in that setting, does that make them more compassionate well, and aware? Well, first of all, they, uh, they care about uh, the problem, and I think it's uh, important uh, that uh, we become uh, exposed to it. I, I find as, a, as someone involved in public life that we spend a good deal of time on the floor of the Senate and committee, uh, but I find one of the inspiring, one of the factors that continues to inspire me is be in, in, uh, in touch with people who, first of all, are, are doing something about it. Uh, they're the, uh, the real heroes, mm -hmm. those people working in, uh, for the voluntary agencies uh, here in our own state and across the country. Uh, uh, they're so-called nameless people, but they're doing something for others, and uh, also to be exposed to the problem and see uh, proud individuals who uh, want to provide for themselves and for their families reduced to this kind of uh, <laughs> a situation. They, uh, the thing that you're constantly inspired by is that they don't want it. They want to be able to provide. Many of them have been able to provide for their families and now sure. caught into this uh, new 
situation. Great deal of pride among the hungry. Um, your kids, how are they faring? Uh, Kara's the oldest, right? And then That's Patrick, right. and then Teddy. Uh, let's focus on Teddy. Little, little change. <laughs> Is that <laughs> yeah, not right? Am I, I not that, right? Yeah, it's Carr, Teddy, and Patrick. Carr, Teddy, and Patrick. Okay. <laughs> I don't know how you keep them. I'm glad you keep them straight. Don't right. ask me about all the other 30 nieces and nephews. <laughs> well, what, in what order they come? You couldn't do it? <laughs> I don't think you so. wouldn't pass that I test. I uh, hopefully would run out of time <laughs> before I'm really uh, challenged by it. Um, how's Kara doing? She is uh, well. She's been working in uh, New York for uh, a television station for the last uh, three years and has enjoyed it working in the production. Uh, one of the things that has been very uh, made me proud is that she's done so well in, in, uh, in that particular uh, assignment. The other thing that kind of troubles me is I don't see her as much as you I don't. can. But I hope uh, this uh, summer she's uh, hopefully moving up to. Uh, uh, she is moving up to Boston, so she might be knocking on the door, trying uh, to get a job. It, it seems that you probably are, in many ways, a, a father figure to a lot of the Kennedy yeah. children. And but, but as far as your own three kids are concerned, are you proud of what, the kind of father you've oh, been? Very uh, well. I'm very proud of them. Hopefully, they're proud of the kind of father that I've been. We had a very uh, good day with uh, my son Teddy and the. On, on Saturday, racing in the uh, first uh, JFK regatta in Boston Harbor, and uh, oh, that went well. And uh, well, that was a lot of uh, a lot of fun. It gave you a good chance to uh, to, to uh, get on the boat. It's always a question who'll be the skipper, but I've uh, rejected uh, turned that over to him a number of years ago. Teddy works with uh, prosthetic um, implements for a, the handicap. He uh, has a foundation mm -hmm. called Facing the Challenge. Uh, he rejects the uh, words uh, handicapped. Mm -hmm. He believes that any of those that uh, uh, have either lost limbs or are physically or mentally impaired are, are basically challenged and uh, he has uh, his in his uh, foundation he has been helpful in getting people placed in employment here mm -hmm. in Massachusetts and as well as uh, working in the president's commission on the handicapped and uh, also working in the a variety of the various uh, uh, what they call handicapped programs. Uh, how do you keep them from being spoiled? How do you keep them compassionate, caring human beings with, with the Kennedy opportunity? Yeah. Is well, that I, difficult? I think it's, uh, they, they have uh, certainly positive and very uh, wonderful uh, qualities, which I'm uh, proud of. I suppose that they have mischievous qualities as well. And, uh, Are you I proud of those? Uh, well, <laughs> I think it's realistic. It's human. Everyone. <laughs> Uh, knows that um, young people are challenged in uh, these days, and they certainly uh, are. I think uh, they, they, uh, uh, I'm very proud of, <coughs> of all of them. I think the variety, they're all doing different kinds of things. Mm -hmm. We've got ones now running for uh, office, <coughs> Joe's running for in Congress, District, and Kathleen. Yeah. Kathleen, how's Kathleen's and, uh, campaign She's doing, doing very uh, well. She speaks well, cares a lot about it. I told them to enjoy the first campaign. Uh, that's Why? always the, well, it's the excitement, it's the new. Uh, the first time out, it's uh, you generally are associated with a lot of your contemporaries and peers, and it's uh, and you still and have a sense of idealism. It kind of can and, go away, and, can't uh, it? And hopefully a uh, humor too. Yeah. It's uh, <laughs> important to be able to laugh at uh, yourself. Uh, sometimes it gets more difficult as time goes on, but that's an important quality, I think, for uh, political leaders. Let's take a break here. Good. We'll come back. We'll continue the conversation with Senator Kennedy right after this. With President Mondale in the White House, instead of slashing essential measures to strengthen our schools, we will cancel that needless missile without a mission, that reckless weapon without a home, the MX missile. We cannot afford wasteful military spending which weakens both our economy and the national security. A just society cannot be tough on poor mothers and easy on Pentagon contractors. Senator Kennedy doesn't like looking at himself, I'll tell you, I'm watching that. That, of course, was Senator Kennedy, the Democratic National Convention. What explained the incredible landslide? Was it Reagan or what's going on on the other side of the Democratic Party? Is, is the Democratic Party healthy? Well, um, uh, the answer is yes. Uh, they've uh, had some uh, reversals, but um, I think uh, Jefferson really said it uh, well when he said that a political party 
uh, has to run through a process of revolution every 20 years. And I think it is important uh, for the uh, Democratic Party to have a chance to rethink uh, programs but not leave its values. I think the basic values of fairness and equity and decency and trying to do something about injustice in our society and being a country that's a leader around the world, strong in terms of protecting our interests and our allies, but tireless in the pursuit of of peace, all are, are basic values, but we have to rethink about how to achieve those. And I like to believe that uh, those are values which are shared by the American people. We have not always been as successful uh, as we should have been in terms of presenting those values, in terms of programs uh, in the past, but I'm very hopeful that uh, uh, our sense of uh, values and, and the program will be uh, win the confidence of the American people in 1986 when the Senate is up at stake and in 1988 in the presidential election. Vladimir Posner, Soviet spokeswoman, uh, spokeswoman, was here last week and we spent time together and it was really fascinating. Uh, he was, he was spent much of his growing up in Brooklyn, New York and I asked him his perceptions of America and Russia and he said, what bothers me about America is here is this vast country able to take care of its people, and yet there are so many that do without. And in our country, at least, we take care of people. Now, of course, there's a lot of question there you could get into. But do we do enough for the have-nots in this country? Um, and why do you think we should do more? What is it inside of you that makes you feel that way? Well, <clears throat> I think, uh, as you've pointed out, we're a society that has been blessed, certainly in the resources and uh, with the talents of the people, the particular mixture of races which came here to this uh, country uh, with the attempt to find something new, so, some uh, new hope and opportunity. And uh, that's been an extraordinary mix and those that were very committed to some uh, ideas about a very kind of special government. Uh, so we have the, uh, the resources. Now, the, the real question is, is uh, over the period of this recent uh, time, the last, uh, last six years, we have seen uh, the reductions in uh, support for food programs and we've seen the increase in the hungry. We're seeing <coughs> now um, some uh, the growth of functional illiterates in our society, about a million eight hundred thousand a year. I think the real important thing is uh, we hear those that talk about, uh, well, uh, being a conservative in, in the philosophy. It would seem to me that part of our heritage is ensuring that the next generation is going to inherit America the beautiful the way we inherited America the beautiful, and that is in terms of an educated population, those that are going to be free from hungry quality schools, air that isn't but going to be But we have an awful lot of young people in this country who believe that there might not be a future for our country, that we may end up in nuclear war and live today because you might die tomorrow. A lot of them are taking drugs and drinking for that reason and just have no sense of future. How do we reinstill that? Well, I think that? Uh, one of the things is that you have to uh, challenge them to, to be involved and to do better. Uh, one of the most important parts of uh, President Kennedy's uh, presidency was the Peace Corps and uh, the people that uh, the young people that said, uh, when <coughs> they asked, well, why were they in the Peace Corps, or they'd say, I was never involved in politics. No one ever asked me to do anything. And now I'm being asked to do something for my country. Both of and your I brothers they, believe the young were so enormously important. Well, I think it is important to involve them in doing something other than letting them uh, just uh, be self-gratifying uh, in their own kinds of interest. And I think that starts both with, in terms of the family, sure. I studying it starts in the community, and I think it starts with regard to national leadership. I think if anybody says we're going to cut all your taxes, or a substantial amount of your taxes, raise defense, not ask you to do anything about your country, then uh, you get a, a mood which we are having at the present time. America has always done best when it's been challenged. That's been true in all of our past uh, history. And it is true today. And Americans basically aren't being challenged to do something. Everything is just fine. You don't have to do anything. Everything's going to get better. Have you always and done best in your own uh, life when you've been challenged? Sure, I sure have. I don't, How's your mother? I have to she's ask you. Well, she, uh, uh, we had a, a very good uh, dinner with her last night. She, uh, we were asking her about uh, the midnight ride of Paul Revere. We, she was uh, telling the grandchildren a little while ago in April about Patriot's Day, and she was uh, reciting that wonderful uh, poem. And uh, so some of the children were kind of half teasing her last night about uh, would you recite it one more time. Have you recorded so her memories? Did. Have you put her down on tape to uh, pass on? Well, I've, I've, uh, I've, I've done some of that and I've uh, done some uh, writing about her. She's, uh, she's been uh, really the inspiration for, uh, I think, in our whole family, has been holding the uh, family together and she continues uh, to inspire. Um, I think all of uh, our family and, and perhaps uh, some of those that have had challenges in their own life. You pulled out in 84 for family reasons, you said. If you were drafted, if there was a draft for you, would no, you go? No, no, I've uh, indicated I'm, uh, I would not. 
and uh, I've indicated I uh, enjoy the, uh, the Senate. Um, it has its frustrations. It has its satisfactions. I care very deeply about the matters which we're involved in, whether it's hunger, health issues, the problems of uh, nuclear escalation, uh, the uh, quality of our uh, schools and communities, the problems of violence in our society. And, uh, and uh, we have a very, imp I have an uh, important, I think, opportunity to make some difference in those. So I enjoy the, uh, the Senate and will continue to be active uh, 